QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Loan Manager Overview. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. We are in a QuickBooks practice file. We will set up another practice file specifically to practice with the Loan Manager. But at this point in time, we want to show the overview of the Loan Manager, where the Loan Manager is located, and what are some of the benefits of the Loan Manager. Then we'll go ahead and start to do some more transactions and enter things into the Loan Manager. So where is it located? It's in the Banking dropdown up top. We then go down to the Loan Manager manager so the loan manager is going to be somewhat of a supporting type of documentation to the loans that will be on the financial statements so the basic process would be that you would put the loan basically on the books and then you'd go in here and set up the the loan manager system related to it so to see that let's also open up the balance sheet going to go to the reports drop down company and financial and then let's take a look at the balance sheet so we'll go on down to the balance sheet standard and then uh, I'm going to change the dates to well let's keep it let's go 12 31 2 1 so then we have our loans down here so we have to set the loan up on the books already so we're going to set up I'm going to set up basically multiple loans in multiple different accounts I like to track the loans separately so if I have more than one loan that I'm going to be financing typically like to track track it separately now one of the problems we have with the loans is that when we write a check for it when we make a payment on it then if it's a standard type of loan and an installment type of loan the amount of the payment will always be the same however the allocation between interest and principal will differ and that can make it difficult when we're just trying to do our data input process because we want to memorize the transaction and have it you know the same transaction each time well, the loan manager can basically help us out with that because it'll help us to basically generate the amortization schedule, which is one thing that you're going to need in order to break out the payments between principal and interest. Not only that, but once set up, then you can pull your payments directly from the loan manager and that will break it out automatically so that uh, whenever you make a payment for the interest in principal, you can pull it directly from here and not have to adjust uh, the amount be breaking out between the interest and principal each time so let's kind of see how that would work once you have it on the balance sheet notice this this amount here is tied then to that 60,000 loan that was on the balance sheet so we'd have to put it on the balance sheet first and then go in here and set up a uh, loan manager uh, item related to it that will then help us to give us basically an amortization table and link to the type of payments or data input bills checks that we can put together that would then record the payments decreases to the checking account interest expense and decrease to the loan payable so once we have this one so once you have the loan set up you can add the loan here uh, and then you can set up a payment you can edit the loan details if necessary so you can go back in there and edit it and then you can remove the loan if you need to here if you remove the loan in here it does not remove it from the balance sheet this is kind of separate to the balance sheet this is supplemental to the balance sheet this can help you to create forms that will then affect the balance sheet such as bills and uh, checks however uh, this item here is not tied directly to the loan on the balance sheet so if you delete it shouldn't be a problem now if we were to edit the details here this is kind of the setup for this item that we set up here it's a sixty thousand dollar loan it's uh, we all allocated to the bank, the lender. It started on 1 1 2020. We're going to say it was 60,000. The term is going to be 60. Oftentimes, they give you the term maybe in years. This would be like a five year loan. Five years times 12 would be 60 payments. So, five year loan, monthly payments, 60 payments. And then, if I said next, we're going to say that the, the due date of the next payment is in the next month because we're going to pay monthly. The amount is 1,132.27. This is something that's typically known. They, they often give you what the amount is when, they, when you set up the loan, right? So you're going to know how much you're going to pay each month. Number of payment, we're going to say for the first one, we're on payment number one. Then we had it set up as monthly. Uh, does this loan have an escrow? We're going to say no for this particular one. Say next. And then 5% interest. So that's going to be the interest rate. So they, they provided us with the interest rate. Now, sometimes they can be sneaky and not provide you the interest rate because you can kind of back into it if you have the payment amount and whatnot. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. But then it's going to be the compounding. How often is it compounding? Uh, monthly or exact days. So tip, we're going to keep it at the standard, with a, which is monthly here. And then checking account is the payment 
account. It's going to be coming out of the checking account when we make the payments. Interest is going to go to interest expense. And if there's any fees, it's going to go to the bank service charge and OK. So then we have this item set up. Once set up, then you got your basic information down below so you can see what loan it is. It's the bank loan. Here's the original date, the original amount, uh, the interest. This is kind of like the general information that you would be pulling from, say, the loan document when you set up the loan document. The second tab is what most people want here, that being the amortization schedule. So here's the amortization schedule showing that after the first payment, we started at 60,000, it's gonna go down by, by not the full amount of the payments. So the payment we're gonna make is for 1,132.27. We're gonna be decreasing, uh, we're gonna charge two interest, 250 of it. We'll charge to principal, the 882.27 of that, and and then the the difference is gonna the principal is gonna go down by that, leaving us with the 59.11773 after that payment has been made. Now, when we make the payments, uh, it can be easier to do now. So what we're gonna do is go straight into this to this section, and then we can say I want to make a payment. So set up a payment, and then. Uh, you could say I'm so this is going to be the general information for the payment if you can pay basically the allocation between principal and interest if it's wrong you can basically make the adjustment here but hopefully it's right if you have everything set up this should be allocated correctly the number of the payment we're on payment number one we're saying here so we're going to be paying the first payment that number will affect then uh, the the principal and interest I mean it depends where we are on the amortization table and then we're going to say, I want to write a check or we can enter a bill. Now, these two items, it depends what you're doing. If you're making an electronic payment, then it's possible that it's going to be taken directly out of your checking account. You could then write a check and then you can reconcile it to basically what comes out of your account by basically um, doing a bank reconciliation. Or if you have bank feeds set up, once you write the check, you can match it up against the check that's going to be cleared on the bank feeds. You can do the matching system. Or uh, if you have electronic payments, I think it might be better to actually do the bill where you enter the bill so that you're still entering it on your side. And then you could be breaking out the proper interest and principal at that point in time. And then when it clears the bank, then you again, you can match it if you're using the bank feeds or, or uh, then you can basically pay the bill if you are um, actually physically writing the check. If you're physically writing the check, then you can basically write the check and it'll break out the proper interest and principal or enter the bill. Notice one of the problems is if you're relying on the bank feeds, the bank only knows the amount that decreased the checking account, which is this amount. And if you have some that, someone that, who is just dependent on the bank feeds to record the transactions, it's not going to be able to memorize the other side of the transaction, the principal and interest, because those two things change each time. So we can't just memorize the transaction that's going to be taking place uh, so instead, it would be nice to take the information from here and record either the bill or check and then use the bank feeds possibly to match to it so that we have the proper breakout between principal and interest and don't have to do that at the point in time that we have the bank feeds process because then we have to change it basically uh, each time. So this that's one of the major benefits in my opinion. And so I could say that I want to like write a check, enter the check, and then uh, we have our, our check, so it's going to be coming out, and the date of the check is here. I'm going to make it as of 013120, and then so here's the amount decrease in the checking account, and then the breakout between the loan payable decrease in the loan amount, the other side then going to interest expense. If I was to record this and I say save and close, okay, okay, and then go to the balance sheet, then I'm going to see it in the checking account. So the checking account has now decreased, of course, by the form that was put together. Let's close this out and change the dates up top in the customized report so I can zoom drill down on all of it. 010121 to 1231. Uh, let's do it. Let's go 010120 to 123120. And then I'm going to say OK. So now let's double click on the checking account here. And we have the loan payment there it is there's the amount that was paid and then the other side part of it's going to be going to the loan so the loan should be decreased there's the loan double clicking on it it started at the 60,000 went down by the 88227 it's now at the 59117 if i go back to the loan manager that should that should uh, match out to the 59117 in the balance here 
and you can see that payment one has now disappeared down here in the schedule so the next payment should bring it down to the 58 uh, 231 so that's on the balance sheet and then on the income statement if i go to the reports drop down company and financial profit and loss standard and we take a look at this and we break this out uh, from 010120 to 123120. Then we have the interest expense here, double clicking on that. And we see that the interest expense for that one loan was here. So if I double click on that, there, there it is. So I'm going to close this back out. Now, if I do the second payment, same kind of process, I'm going to close this back out back to the loan manager. And if another time period passed, I would say that I want to set up a payment. And this time, maybe you want to set it up as a bill, meaning it's going to go through the accounts payable. It's not going to decrease the checking account directly, but go through the payable. I'm going to say, OK, and you'll note that now we have a different breakout between the interest and principal. It's not going to be the same amount down here, although the decrease to what will be the checking account once we pay it will be this. We're going to increase now the, the accounts payable that will eventually then when, when we pay it, decrease the checking account by that amount, breaking out the interest and principal between these two. So then I'm going to say uh, save and close. And now we're on payment three and we're, we have a balance of the 58,231.78. If I go back to the balance sheet, then we have the 58,231.78 on the loan balance down here. And now instead of decreasing the checking account, we increase the accounts payable, or the accounts payable liability down here. And that is now we entered that transaction and I should have backdated it, but I entered it as of 1031 is that 1132 uh, total amount that's going to increase that we can then pay at a future point. We can see that on the home page, of course, we entered in essence a bill. We can then pay the bill at some point in the future when we pay the bill. And that's going to be for that bank loan, that bank loan right there. So closing that out, the other side then go into the profit and loss in the interest expense and we can see the amount allocated to the interest expense for the two loan payments is now different because it will change as the loan as the loan moves forward now note that if i if i then use the bank feeds for example for either one of these options when it clears the bank i can then match it to for example if i go to the balance sheet i can match it if i'm using the bank feeds i can match it to this bill and therefore, I I'm, don't I'm have to record the interest in principle from the bank feeds, right? Because, because that's when it'll basically change. I can input it or input it from the loan manager to get the proper breakout between interest and principal and then simply just match it out. I can also do that with the check up top. If I was to create a check, then when it clears the bank, uh, either through either through a bank reconciliation, then I would be fine. I could just do a normal bank reconciliation. Or if I had bank feeds, it'll show the decrease in the checking account of that 113227 and I can just match it up instead of at that, at that point in time having to enter the proper breakout between the loan payable and the interest expense. So I'm going to close this back out. So to, to get a feel for this loan manager uh, item over here, it's useful to kind of enter this into what I think is like an Excel sheet to know, to know what an amortization table is. So we'll, we'll actually build an amortization table. Now, this is an amortization table, same thing, right? $60,000 loan. This is the amount of the payment that we're going to make standard each time. Minus, oh, hold on a second. Undo. Minus the, in, minus, and then we have the interest. And then the loan payment is that 88227. Bring in the loan balance down from 60000 down by the loan reduction to that amount. And then payment two brought it down to this amount. And now we're on payment three, which is the 57,342.13. So that's this amount, 57,342.14. It's off by a penny, so rounding. And then, and then we have the next item is going to be 58,231.78. Uh, so, so the next, the next after that's after payment number four, 56,448.79. Uh, which is going to be 56448 79 it's off by a penny so so what we'll do is we'll kind of put this together kind of in excel so you can see it we can see how they calculate basically this is basically the information that you should get with the loan but notice that they could kind of remove one of these items any one of these items that could be removed because you could then derive it if they give you everything else so we'll, we'll think about that but then you also want the amortization table you need the amortization table in some way shape or form so that you can break out the proper interest in principle but because by holding the payment the same we're, we're required then to adjust the allocation between interest and principle 
uh, over the over the term of the loan. So typically, if you didn't have the loan manager, you'd have to have this schedule either provided by the bank, which they often don't make it, don't do it for you, or you'd have to do it yourself or get it from your CPA firm or something like that. Uh, and it's really useful to be able to build it, you know, in an Excel worksheet here and just kind of double check it or and or now you can build it in the uh, QuickBooks. And I recommend I would do it basically both both ways because I can double check that it's properly done here. And then when you set it up in QuickBooks, the main benefit is that the data input will be easier. I don't have to basically go back to the schedule to kind of figure it out. I can basically enter. I can just tell it to pull it from this payment schedule and do the proper breakout between interest and principal. And if I'm giving someone else or, or making a system for someone else to put the data input in, then they no longer have to go back to the schedule. It's going to be easier for them to do. They can just look at this schedule. They don't have to go back over here and break out when it like flows through through the bank feeds, for example. They don't have to go over here and then figure the proper breakout. They can just say, hey, I'm just going to match that transaction to the bill or the check that was entered automatically, possibly with the use of reminders uh, using this system. And that'll make it a little bit a little bit smoother so we'll see how to set those up we'll set it up in excel next time some loans in excel then we'll set them up in uh in the practice files here and then we'll think about situations where we have possibly multiple loans that we're going to be putting together and uh, maybe that uh, hadn't been using this thing and we got we're like in the middle of the loan how would we set up the loan manager in those cases